If you are looking to add gamification to your cybersecurity program for security awareness or for changing security behaviors or security culture, then this video is for you. I have three huge tips to help you start a gamification process from scratch. Hi, my name is Jordan Schroeder, and it is my passion to help business and security leaders take their security programs to the next level, because if we can all do this right, we all win. And just like all of my videos, down in the description field is a CPE text that you can copy and paste into your personal CPE tracker so that you can get credit for watching this video. But remember, in order to get credit for the CPE, you have to watch this video all the way to the end. And if you want to get notified when the next video comes out, hit the subscribe button and the bell and you will get that notification. Gamification is a big topic and it's fairly complicated and I talk about uh, adding gamification to an existing cybersecurity program in my book. But this video is different. This video is assuming that you are wanting to start that gamification process, that program, uh, from scratch, either as a parallel to your existing program or something new entirely, something big, something to really shift your culture. And so the three tips I'm going to go through are, one, the power of play, two, purging punishment, and three, the path of progress. These are the three things that you will need to think about as you are designing and implementing such a gamification process. To start off, I want to say this. Gamification has a bad rap. Gamification gets a lot of pushback from business leaders and other people. Mostly it comes in forms of we're here to work, we're not here to play games, and we don't want to interrupt what we're doing and the important work that we're doing in security by playing games. And so you have to be careful when you're using the term gamification because it's not about playing games. It's about using the tools and the processes that games are really good at in order to change behavior and to teach new skills and new, new processes. Games are really, really good at this, and we can borrow from those things in order to change how people work and how they behave. When I've tried to implement gamification processes, I've learned to change the terms. I don't use the term gamification. I use the term active feedback, and that's the term that I use in my book. And the idea is that the person, the individuals, get active feedback as they behave, as they do the things they're supposed to do or not supposed to do. They get that feedback instantaneously, which is what you do in a game, right? You sink the basket, you sink the putt, you get the puck into the goal, you get a point, right? You get that instant feedback that that was what you were supposed to do. And so from a gamification process for cybersecurity, you want to be able to do the same thing. This creates a bit of a challenge for people wanting to create a gamification process, because what you're talking about is producing personal feedback. And that's what makes gamification so powerful and so difficult. You are designing a program to monitor, detect, and feedback on behavior and performance in the digital world to each individual. And that requires a lot of data collection and a lot of data processing. And there's a lot of software stuff in the background that needs to be done that has to be thought out very, very well. When you are creating a gamification process, what you want to include, and you have to be very careful in your design, is to include the ability for agency. And by agency, I mean the ability for the person to exercise their own will and creativity in how the thing gets done. Just like in sports or any other games, you have a goal, rescue the princess, sink the putt, whatever the goal of the, the game is, but you can do that in a variety of different ways. And that's what makes a game fun. If you want to have this same process and borrow the same power from the gamification process, you also need to be able to provide the ability for someone to exercise their free will, their creativity, their agency, and how they get things done. This is also important for cybersecurity because if you set them down in a very narrow path, a, a railroad, right? You just have to keep on the railroad. A, it's no fun. B, it also doesn't account for all of the changes and all the other things that the person is going to encounter in their workday. Right? If cybersecurity was easy, right, we would just set the process, set the policy, forget about it, and move on with our lives. But every day, every week, every month, things change. 
And so the behaviors need to be applied in new and interesting ways. Your gamification process needs to be able to detect these things, needs to be able to detect when behaviors are being applied or when actions are being applied outside of the box, right? And to be able to account for those things, provide feedback and provide points, all right? And for the rest of this video, I'm gonna talk about feedback and points pretty synonymously because that's typically how you provide the feedback in a gamification process. So you need to be able to detect it and you need to be able to provide those points even if they are not in a set box or in a rail on a railroad uh, of what you're hoping them to do. Because if you're providing them a railroad, it's no longer gamification. This is now a standardized test, right? And that's not what you want and that's not going to adjust behaviors and that's not going to help your users, your customers, your staff members, whoever it is who is going through this. That's not going to help them change the behaviors and get better at cybersecurity. That's just going to teach them to do better at the test. The other thing in the power of play is what people feel when they're going through this. And when we're talking about gamification, we are talking about feeling. We're talking about behaviors and culture and what we, what we want to do as an end result, right, from this really high level concept. But when we're designing a gamification process, we need to be talking about fun. We need to be talking about feeling. And there's a handful of things that people want to feel when they're in this type of process or else your program's probably going to fail. And these are the things. They want to feel successful. They want to know that they have been successful when they've done something. The point goes up on the scoreboard when they score a goal, for instance. People want to feel structure, that there is a path of safety. If you're to look at a side-scroller uh, video game, right, there is a path for how people can get from point A to point B. And there might be obstacles along the way, but there is that safe path that at any point in time, you know what that path is going to be, or you can learn it as you go. Smart. People want to know that they are exploring, learning, growing. They're getting it, right? And they want to be able to feel that as they go through this process. And they want to know that they're solving problems. And that's the big thing. It's part of the agency, the creativity, the uh, applying of someone's will. But it's the ability to know that I am able to solve this problem. And it's the same thing whether we're dealing with sports or video games or any other board games or any other type of game. The problem is you've got a goalie in front of the goal. You have another team that you, ha you have to compete against. And that is a problem that needs to be solved every second uh, of the game in order to reach your goals. And so solving those problems has to be possible and the person has to feel that they are solving the problems as they go. So these four things combine into a very powerful recipe in gamification or any other type of game. And if you can tap into that, you can have a very powerful program. Purge punishment. Games have winners, games have losers. No game punishes the loser. There are some games that go with some funky things and punish winners. No games punish losers. And if they do, they're not played again. People will lose. People will fail at this process, just as they fail at cybersecurity, and that needs to be okay, and it needs to be a safe place in order to fail. If you somehow, in any way, imbue punishment with this gamification process, no one's going to want to play. Or, worse yet, they're going to try to learn how to game the game in order to avoid punishment. But when they do this, they're not gonna learn the lessons. They're not going to adopt the behaviors you want them to learn. And that is a bigger problem. And I've talked about this in a variety of different uh, venues. I've written about this. I have a, another book on this process and I'll, I'll have a link to that in the description as well. And there are four ways that you can respond when people do things that you don't want them to do. And there are ways that can be successful in changing behaviors and ways that can be disastrous in changing behaviors. So you have to purge punishment from this process. And sometimes punishment is defined by the user, not by the game designer. So knowing what might be perceived as punishment is also an important point. The other thing is that success, scoring the points, doing the thing that you're supposed to do, the correct behavior, success needs to feel good.
And crafting that is also a very important part of a gamification process. And that's part and parcel with uh, purging punishment and eliminating punishment from the process. You want to focus on making success feel good rather than making failure feel bad. People are going to feel bad anyway. You don't need to make it worse. The third point is having a path of progress. And for this, borrowing from a video game is probably more apt because sports is encapsulated. You have a very set period of time that you play a game. Uh, even board games uh, can be the same way. Video games and some of these much larger video games are more of a lifestyle, as it were. And you're playing these games over days and weeks and in some cases months. And it's those games that you probably want to borrow inspiration from. In these longer games, there is a path of progress. You level up, you gain experience, you gain equipment, you develop as you go. And you know what you need to do to get the next thing, to develop the next point. And your gamification program needs to have this designed, and that needs to be very clear to every participant. It's not just do the thing and you get points. But why? What's the point? What's the next step? Do I get rewarded for getting a certain number of points? These are the things you need to do, and you need to communicate this and be clear about it up front. The other thing you want to do in borrowing from these big video games is being able to offer sufficient opportunities to advance, to grow, to move towards the next step regularly. And depending upon how you're designing a program, that should be daily. It might be hourly, it might be more frequently, but there should be sufficient opportunities to advance daily. Why? Because you're going to lose them if they're not engaging with this process on a regular basis. If they can only advance every week, they're just going to forget about it, right? You need to engage them as a regular part of their day, throughout their day, and throughout their week. They need to be plugged in to this process as part of their workday. The other thing that will be very powerful in a gamification process is comparing your rank to somebody else. How are you doing in comparison to somebody else? Now, this can get tricky if you name everybody, if you somehow make it so that you are comparing one person to another or having a top 10 list. Those can provide a little bit of a problem in some instances. You have personal information problems. Being exposed like that can feel like a bit of a punishment and people might not want that. So you have to be very careful about that. But having some way of comparing an individual to a team, a group, the rest of the company, whatever, will go a long way to providing that impetus to get better, do better, and move to the next step. If you're looking for other tips in how to do a security awareness program and how to implement gamification, uh, the link to my book will be down in the description field and the link to my short book on how to respond when someone causes a breach or any type of behavior that you don't want will also be in the description. Thanks very much.